What's up guys, Filterless here. Today I'm going to be covering the dock I use and the drive I use, as well as another dock I tried, and I've tried multiple besides this one, as well as one of my older T5 drives. It's going to be benchmarks, charts, everything else. Also the charger I'm using that makes it where both of these will show 30 watt turbo when the Ally is plugged in, along with the cable. None of this is sponsored. I bought this with my own money. I actually have two of these and one of them is plugged into my MacBook. And the main point of this is to show y'all just how much faster and how much of a difference this 10 gigabits per second makes when you're using a drive that can push those speeds. So we're gonna cover just about everything I can think of in here. If you're interested in getting a dock, I'm going to just explain the differences and why you might wanna look at a higher speed dock just for future proofing your system as well as using it possibly on other devices. So to jump straight into it, this is the Anchor 555 USB-C Hub 8-in-1 on Amazon. And I'm going to quickly go over the ports. We have our SD card reader right here, micro SD card reader. We have two USB-A ports that run at that 10 gigabits per second. And one of the other main things I wanted was also a USB-C port as that is what the drives use. That's also 10 gigabits. We've got our 100 watt power delivery here, which does a total of 85 output. We have HDMI and this is 60 Hertz 4K, not 30 Hertz like the other dock, the Steam dock. There's a bunch of docks that will only do 30 Hertz 4K and I wanted to make sure to get that 60. And then we have ethernet if we ever need it right here on the back. But onto the main thing with this dock, it's going to be these 10 gigabits per second ports. So on this other dock, we're at five gigabits per second, which is still good. And we still have the data port as well as the power delivery, HDMI and the card readers. However, when you have five gigabits per second, there is a difference. So loading up a chart, I tested out the game load times using the Samsung T7 on both the five gigabits per second dock as well as the 10 gigabits per second. In blue over here, we have the five gigabits per second. This is the how long it took for a game to load off of the drive. And so as you can see on Forza Horizon 4, it was about 55 seconds using this five gigabits per second dock versus about 25 seconds for this 10 gigabits per second dock. With GTA 5, we're at 45 seconds against 25. Microsoft Flight Simulator, 87 seconds versus 60. Skyrim loaded extremely quick at eight seconds. And Red Dead Redemption 2 was 60 seconds versus 41. It might not seem like a lot, but there's a lot of games where I noticed it was taking extraordinarily longer than what I was used to. And that's where I even started looking into this dock and realized it's because of that 10 gigabits per second. I also decided to transfer games between them. So I use this drive with this dock to transfer games to my ally that I want to play. I only have a one terabyte in the ally. This is a four terabyte drive right here. So I keep most of the games on here and just transfer it over real quick. So transfer speeds do matter in my situation. And Skyrim took 41 seconds on the slower five gigabits per second dock versus 20 on this faster one. 62 versus 34, 55 versus just 28 seconds, in Alien Isolation, 99 seconds versus 66 seconds. So it's a greatly improved time when you transfer something like Forza Horizon 5, which is 130, 40 gigs, it makes a huge difference to have that faster dock, faster drive. I also ran Crystal Mark on these and with the T7, or the T5, you can see over here, we're right at the same when we're using this five gigabits per second dock. And that works great if you have just something like a T5, or even if you have just a slower drive laying around, that will work perfect to get the JSOX and other 3.0 docks because you won't be utilizing those speeds as much. However, when we come down here and we have the T7 on the faster dock right here, you can see it did 949, 950, which is extremely fast pulling data and writing data to the drive through the dock. This is all tested on the Ally. And just to show y'all, here is the benchmark actually running on the Ally and doing the just normal five one gigabyte file tests. You can see that 948 and 950, right? 
This is on the T7 right here. And then jumping over to the T5, this is connected to the faster dock. You can see we're actually getting 567 read, 532 write. When we use this slower dock with the normal 3.0, you can see here we're limited to 414 read and write. No matter which drive we use, we're getting about that speed and it's that 3.0 limitation. All right, and then here I'm just plugging in that Ugreen charger into the anchor dock and you'll see we're gonna get that 30 watt turbo mode. As you can see here in command center, the full 30 watts. This is on the Anchor 555. So then I went ahead and hooked up the Anchor 341, which is that five gigabits per second dock. And as you can see here, as soon as we plug it in, we're gonna be jumping to that 30 watt turbo mode as well. So they'll both be able to supply that full amount of power with that Ugreen charger. And I just wanted to quickly show with the JSOX dock, you do get the 4K at 60 Hertz, but you are only getting those 3.0 ports. So if you're planning on buying a faster drive, or even if you have a desktop and you're planning on getting something like this, where you can plug in your NVMe and run USB-C, then those higher speeds are definitely going to matter or even something like the t7 or whatever comes after this and other companies where these drives are getting a lot faster and here's something you definitely want to be careful of this right here is 2.0 that is extremely slow usb ports right there and i'm not seeing a single dock that has 10 gigabits per second they're all 3.0 besides this right here here we go they're advertising it this is how you know 10 gigabits per second usb c and two usb a data ports that run at that 10 which is something you would want to advertise here's the other dock as well for anchor and you can see they're showing the five gigabits per second but even other anchor docks like this one right here 3.0 and right here 2.0 you do not want 2.0 usb ports if you're planning on running anything off of an external drive even this anchor dock you can see there's two 2.0s in here and i just ran across this one so here's a u green that looks promising and you see the two usb a with the 10 gigabits per second which is great but whenever they're putting 4k in here and not putting the hertz it usually means as we scroll down we'll see this is only 4k at 30 hertz and you really want to get that 60 hertz However, it does have those 10 gigabits per second ports, which is really great. And not that you're going to be gaming at 4K 60 Hertz, but if you're doing any work related task on a TV you have or monitor, it's really nice to have the 60 Hertz. You're not going to want to use the 30. All right. And so here's a U green one that actually is really close. So this is the 4K 60 Hertz. It's nine and one. And we're also getting those 10 gigabits per second ports. So you can see right here, we're getting two of them. So if we scroll down a little bit further, you'll see we're getting a USB-C and one USB-A 3.2, 10 gigabits per second. Then we're getting two of those five. So for a keyboard or mouse, you're actually getting another USB port, which is kind of cool. And the 4K 60 Hertz, 100 watt power delivery with the slots very close to the anchor dock. And so the last thing I wanted to cover was just the charger I chose. This is the Ugreen 100 watt charger. This thing is awesome. We have a little fold out right here. It's pretty compact, pretty small for 100 watts. And we have two USB-C ports that will do 100 watts as well as another USB-C and a USB-A. These can go up to 25 watts. So if you're using this on the raw, you wanna make sure and use one of these top ports when you plug it in so you can get that full 100 watts. And like you saw, this will supply that 30 watt turbo mode. And also it's really neat if you're going to be on the go to have all these extra USB-C ports. I have a lot of devices that are USB-C and still having the USB-A port. And like I said, none of this is sponsored. I just really like these. These are the things I chose for my personal setup. And I thought some people would find it interesting and that it might help you decide what you would want to use. At least some additional options that are a little bit faster if that's what you're looking for. And then finally, I just threw together a price chart of everything in blue. It's just the normal normal price and then we have the on sale price in green and all the links for these will be down in the description here I went and found a one terabyte t5 at Best Buy for $80 however I found a one terabyte t7 on Amazon for 70 so this would be a much better option if you're on a budget the anchor 341 I think is a great dock still you're not getting the 10 gigabits it's 5 gigabits
is, but it is has great build quality. And right now on Amazon, it's only $24. If you are looking for more speed, then the Anchor 555 10 gigabits per second is going to be the way to go. Right now, it's actually on a good sale and it's only 50 bucks. If you pair that with a T7, then you are going to be getting very high, almost 1000 megabytes per second, which is crazy high speed for transferring and loading games. And I would say most people, you'd probably be worth it to get this just in case you do upgrade at some point to a faster drive. Even the older T5 drives still benefit a bit from that 10 gigabit per second USB ports. So for the extra little bit of cost, I personally would go Anchor 555, but if you are not planning on getting a faster external drive at any point in the near future, then it wouldn't make sense and you might as well just go for the five gigabits or the JSOX or any other docs really. A lot of them are these five gigabits per second, so I would choose the one you like. I've been testing these for close to a month now and I can highly recommend them. Also Anchor specifically has some of the best support I have ever experienced in my life when I've had issues with their battery banks in the past. I've had multiple hubs from them, chargers, Anchor is one of the best companies for customer service I have dealt with. Ugreen, I actually haven't heard of them until recently, but I love the charger and the cable I got. And right now this six foot threaded cable is on sale for $9.79 and the material is absolutely awesome. It's fully threaded. It's just a premium filling cable. And then also the Ugreen charger. I am a huge fan of this. It seems to be working well. I don't have as much experience with Ugreen. However, looking through all their products and the ratings, seems like a pretty good company. And this 100 watt charger will definitely supply all the power you need to the Ally. I'm happy I bought it. So I included it in here. And right now it's on a really good sale for 45 bucks. Usually it's about 75. So a decent sale with a lot of these products going on. Like I said, the links will be down below. Anyway, guys, that wraps it up for this video. I just wanted to make one to make sure y'all know what you're getting when you're buying a dock. I think it's important and I think the extra speed's worth it personally. So I wanted to get a video out there for my viewers so you know, hey, if you're going to get an external dock and maybe an external drive at some point, it could be worth getting the extra speed. If not, there's a bunch of options that have that 3.0 and you should be good to go. Whatever you choose, if the video did provide some value, make sure to hit the like, hit the sub, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.